Meadows of the righteous. 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله There's a very common question in today's age The question is will Allah forgive me all the sins I have done in my life, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon me? We welcome you back again to this new series, The Meadows of the Righteous, The Gardens of the Virtuous. Why is repentance? Will Allah forgive you? We will inshallah in this episode deal with this topic. Repentance is that deep feeling of it's a compilation uh, of guilt, regret, this anxiety that a person is doing a, a certain action and he feels so much regret and sadness and worry that he has no other option except to do tawbah. Now tawbah literally means rujua, to return. Who do you return to? You return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have no other option but to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're in such a tight situation. You're in such a situation where you cannot control your feelings and emotions. You have no other option but to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This repentance, this is what repentance is. Turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you realize you've done something wrong. When you feel like guilt in your heart. This repentance is a beloved act. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who repents. Now as humans, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, we tend to make various mistakes. But the most important thing is that we rectify our mistakes. And to kind of take it one step further, we not just rectify them, but we do something good as well. We give back. Yeah, we've done something wrong, we want to kind of counter that by doing a, a virtuous action. One of the most important things uh, is to rectify our mistakes and do as much good actions as we can. Anas bin Malik radiallahu an, he narrates the Prophet sallallahu says, Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now this hadith is amazing, Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased with the repentance of his servant then a person who has lost his camel in a waterless desert. There's no water in this land. Now water is the base and the source of life. Everything depends on water. Now that camel had his provisions, his food and water on it, but he's lost that camel in this desert. Having lost all hopes, he has no more hope. Having lost all hope, thinking that now I ain't gonna get that camel back, I've got no water, I've got no food. He just sits down and thinks, okay, this is the end of my road for me. This is where it ends. My story finishes here. Now when he's lost all hope, he lies down in the shade of a tree, disappointed, just contemplating about, yeah, I've just lost my life. His food and water, his camel's gone. In that moment, he falls asleep. He falls asleep, just contemplating, as he closes his eyes. All of a sudden, that person who has lost all hope, who was thinking, right, this is the end for me. Right, back then, they didn't have phones and whatnot to contact family members or ring the emergency services. So you can't call for anyone. In that very moment, Imagine that person's camel, along with his water and food, just comes right in front of him. Imagine the excitement, the relief, the joy, the feelings of that person who a moment ago was about to, just, he was just contemplating him dying. 
is now just relieved and is so joyful upon seeing his camel. Imagine his, his feelings. He finds his camel standing before him. And then he takes hold of the, the ropes, the reins of that camel. Now in that moment of true happiness that that person is going through, in that moment of true happiness, he turns around and he says, and he says it as a mistake. He says it as a mistake because he was so happy and relieved. He says the following words as a mistake. He says, O oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Rabb. What he was supposed to say is, Ya Allah, I am your slave and you are my Rabb. But because of extreme happiness and relief, he said it the other way around. Sometimes humans do that, they make mistakes. But you could imagine how happy that person is upon finding his camel, when his camel returns to him. The Prophet at the start of this narration, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see that, that's, that's true happiness, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased with a person when he returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after committing a mistake, after being lost and, you know, deviating from the true path, after, you know, going AWOL. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased with that person when he comes back into the right path, when he comes back and finds his guidance, when he comes back on track. Allah is more pleased with that person than how this person was pleased upon finding his kamal. Allah subhanahu likes the person who repents. A true servant, a true person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must always be humble in his court. You know when Iblis was thrown out of heaven for disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command rather than repenting, and feeling guilty, he refused and he became arrogant. And when he didn't do the sajda, sajda of respect to Adam al Islam, what he should have done was to go back on track. He should have done ruju. He refused. And then he became arrogant. Point is, when a person, when he commits a sin, rather than saying to himself or doing dua, Ya Allah, I made a mistake, forgive me, I am a weak servant. Rather than doing that, a person, if he turns around and starts to justify this, and he says that, or he finds a solution or a, a loophole, and he, he says to himself that, no, no, this is why I don't need. That is not what Allah likes. Allah likes that person who humbles himself, who low, lowers himself and says, Ya Allah, I've done wrong, I've made a mistake, I want you to forgive me. Allah likes that person. That person who commits the mistake and then doesn't do ruju, doesn't uh, do tawbah, Allah Allah prefers that person who does do tawbah, who does do ruju. The Prophet Wasallam now, he is the most forgiven person. He is the most righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person whose every single action in his life becomes our way of life. A character which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has said this is uh, the most greatest, noblest character ever. Despite him being perfect, he would still perform istighfar 70 times a day. 70 times a day. He would do istighfar. He would, istighfar literally means to seek repentance. Now in the Arabic, if you look in the Arabic language, istighfar actually means talab al rahmah Talab al-Rahmah. Talab al rahma means to seek mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To seek mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would say, is now 70 in, in our Arabic language, Sabaina marra is commonly used. Um, it actually gives uh, the meaning of abundance. Um, so some scholars have said 70 literal 70 times. Some say that 70 actually means kasrat. And he constantly loads of times throughout the day. Hazrat Aisha would see the Prophet ﷺ worshipping tirelessly in the nights of Ramadan such that the, the Prophet ﷺ's feet would swell, the blessed feet of the Prophet ﷺ would swell. And she would say, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, that you're that person that 
the previous generations that came before us, right, used to seek forgiveness by virtue of your name, right? And the generations that are going to come, they're going to seek forgiveness by virtue of your name. You're that person. And here you are putting all that effort into worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're putting so much effort into seek this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though people will use your name when asking for forgiveness. The Prophet ﷺ said that shouldn't I be a grateful servant? Shouldn't I be a grateful servant? There's a verse of the Qur'an. It's an amazing verse. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if they ever sin against themselves, they do a sin which damages themselves. And then they come to you, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa If a person commits a sin and then goes to you, جَاءُوكَ And they come to you, فَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهَ Whilst they are with you, in your presence, if they ask for Allah's forgiveness whilst they are in your company, and then after they ask for forgiveness, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ If the Rasul, yani if the Prophet وسلم, after that does istighfar for them as well, seeks mercy for them as well, لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ rahima They will indeed find Allah as the most forgiving and merciful. So if a person commits a sin or mistake, he does a mistake, and he goes to the court of the Prophet and he says, he, he asks Allah for forgiveness. He says, Ya Allah, forgive me. But he has to be in the court of the Prophet And then the Prophet performs forgiveness for him as well. Allah will definitely forgive that person. This is like a formula. If you really want your sins forgiven, go to the court of the Prophet And once you have gone to the court of the Prophet seek Allah's forgiveness, the Prophet will also seek your forgiveness. Allah will definitely forgive them. Now, once what happened was that there was a man, a, a Bedouin, a villager, and he came to the golden gates of the Prophet in Madinatul Munawwara, in Riyazul Jannah. And he just he stood there, and, and there was an Imam. Imam was sat in the distance, in the same area. And he came and he stood near the gates, the golden gates. Uh, you must have been there, seen there, if you haven't. And we make dua that all the Muslims go and visit the blessed lands of Madinah Sharif. He, he, now he reached the golden gates and he said, uh, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. He said, O oh, peace be upon you, O oh, Messenger of Allah. Allah yaqul. I have heard the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where it says, if they ever do harm upon themselves and then they go to your court and seek forgiveness from Allah and then you seek forgiveness for them, Allah will indeed be most forgiving and merciful. I've heard that verse. وَقَدْ جِئْتُكَ مُسْتَغْفِرًا لِذَنْبِ And now I have come to you Repenting from my sin, Mustashfi'ambika, seeking your intercession, Ila Rabbi. I am seeking, I want you to intercede for me in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This villager is just gone, golden gates, the Imams are watching in the distance. And then after he read the verse and he said, Ya, ya Rasulullah, this is what I've heard and this is what I want. Then he read this poem and this poem, inshallah, I'll elaborate deep. It says, Ya khayru man dufinat bil qa'i a'zumuhu. That, oh, the best of those who are resting in the ground. The best of those. He read this, this, this poem. The best of those who are resting in the ground. فَطَابَ مِنْ تِبِهِنَّ الْقَاءُ وَالْأَكَمْ the land and vicinity has become pure by virtue of your presence. Nafsil fida'u li qabrin an tasakinuhu. That may I be sacrificed for the tomb that you are resting in. Fihi al-aifafu wa fihi al-judu wal karam. That in it is forgiveness, generosity, and excellency. He read these verses and then he left. Thumman sarafa. Fagalabatni aini. 
that he left, that that village had left, and the Imam Sahib reports, he says that, I fell asleep. I was so tired, I just fell asleep. And whilst I was sleeping in the presence of the golden gates of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, I've seen the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in my dream. فقال, and he said, Ya Utbi, O Utbi, Imam Utbi, Alhiq al Arabiya Fabashirhu and Allah Qad Ghafarala. That he said, Go and find that person. Go and find him. And tell him that I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him. This was his sincerity and his repentance. And what's amazing, what's amazing, if you ever go and your mind doesn't go towards this, um, but the golden gates of the Prophet there's two pillars beside them golden gates. And this poetry is engraved in them pillars beside the golden gates of the Prophet And this is the deep history behind why they, them, them, that poetry is within the golden gates and the pillars inside of them. Uh, it's been hundreds of years and this poetry has been preserved after hundreds of years. There's a verse in Surah Anfal. Allah says that it is not befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He punishes you whilst you are amongst them. And it is not befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He punishes them for as long as they repent. Two interesting points have been made here. Number one, a person will not be uh, punished for as long as his Nabi is around, as long as his Nabi is doing istighfar for them. He will not be punished. Previous nations, uh, whenever they committed um, a sin, such a sin that spread around the entire community, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell that Nabi to migrate, to leave this area. And in history we know that whenever a Nabi left the area, a grand and a mighty punishment came to that nation. It's from or it's not befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish that nation for as long as the Nabi is present within that nation. This is one of the principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish anyone, will not give disaster to any nation for as long as that nation is repenting. So throughout life, we commit sins. We commit sins day in, day out. Our focus should be on repenting, turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should continuously always be in a state of repentance before going to sleep. We should always, always uh, perform repentance, do wudu, perform two rakats of Salatul Tawbah, read the tasbih at least 70 times. We should say, Astaghfirullah al azim uh, وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ إِنَّ وَشَجْرَ تَارِيَا Mira Ali Sunnat has given us this wazifa. We should constantly be and then do dua. Say, Ya Allah, with all the sins that I have committed today, Ya Allah, of my past, Ya Allah, I seek repentance and sleep in such a manner where you are free and you feel tranquility and you feel that I have returned to my Lord, free of sin. There was a man he had killed 99 people. This is a famous story. He killed 99 people and he went to seek forgiveness. He went to seek forgiveness. The question is, will Allah forgive me? And when he reached a certain person uh, who was in authority and he asked him that, look, I, I have killed 99 people. I don't know, will Allah forgive me? And the man turned around and said, no, Allah won't forgive you. You've killed 99 people. So that man who was a murderer, he's killed him as well. 100 people finished. 100 people he's killed. And now he was going towards the, the, another person to seek repentance. He was going to go ask him, look, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do I redeem myself? 
And this person lived at the top of a mountain or the top of a hill, so he was on his journey and he was getting there. During his journey, the angels of death came. One is the angel of mercy and one is the angel of punishment. The angels of punishment and the angels of mercy turned up on his moment of death. And they had this kind of argument that this person was a bad person. Right? So the angels of punishment need to take his soul. And the angels of mercy, they said, no, 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 he was, he was a good person. He was going to seek repentance. Right? So the, the, them angels said that, we're going to take his soul. And they, the angels were disputing. And how they settled this dispute, they agreed that, look, whichever distance was more closer to the destination. So if where his body is, if it's closer to the crime scene, where he just killed that person, then the angels of punishment are going to take him. And if his body is closer to the person that he was going to see to seek repentance, then the angels of mercy are going to take his soul. So during this kind of argument, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful, he's the most amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shortened the distance. And we know he's the most powerful, he could do what he wants. He shortened the distance from that dead person to that pious saint that he was going to go and ask to see how he could repent. And in the end, that person was forgiven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. So how I started was, will Allah forgive me for the sins I have committed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely forgive you if you seek repentance in the appropriate ways and you promise to never do that thing again. I mean, may Allah wa ta'ala give us ability, uh, tawfiq, uh, may he give us the true repentance. I mean, bijahi nabi al amin. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ala muhammad. Meadows of the righteous, 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 meadows of the righteous.